Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what to do when your skincare stops working. This is something I hear all the time. Hey, I had a great skincare routine and then all of a sudden it stopped working. I'm breaking out or my face is red, I'm itchy, etc., etc. Here's the thing, you guys skincare does not stop working. That's right. It's not as though petrolatum or dimethicone suddenly one day decide, hey, we're no longer going to retard transepidermal water loss. It's not as though benzoyl peroxide suddenly decides, hey, I'm no longer going to be antibacterial. I'm no longer going to suppress inflammation. Uh, it's not as though retinol one day is like, hey, you know, I think I'm gonna retire from modulating gene transcription to facilitate better skin cell turnover. No, you guys. This is actually a, a major misconception. And the problem, I think, is that the skincare industry has people believing that skincare products are the end-all be-all solution for skin problems and that they do way more for the skin than they actually do. Uh, a, a good skincare routine, while it can help you, it's not, it's not this panacea. People are giving skincare products way too much credit and they do what they do and that's it but that doesn't mean that you don't have a whole host of other things going on in your life that is dynamic i mean life is dynamic things like your health medications temperature environment stage of life all of these things really influence your skin far more than a skincare product ever will skincare products function as they are <laughs> at a baseline level, but you can have fluxes in the health of your skin that have to do with a lot more than just what you're putting on your skin. So it's not as though the products stop working. Other things may be going on. In the case of acne, I see this all the time. People will say, hey, I've been using benzoyl peroxide for years as a spot treatment to help my acne. If I feel like I'm getting a pimple, maybe around that time of the month, then I put it on and boom, it really helps control it. But now it's stopped working. And people believe that the benzoyl peroxide is just going to make it as though they'll never have acne, especially if it worked in the beginning. It's still working, but what else is going on in your life? Oftentimes, new onset worsening acne breakouts may be due to the fact that some people, especially women, and well, obviously only women, uh, start and stop birth control pills. Starting and stopping birth control pills can cause flares of hormonal acne that, I mean, benzoyl peroxide never really addresses the hormonal component of acne. So it could be that there's a new part of your acne that benzoyl peroxide never would have addressed in the first place. Um, one common scenario is people will go on a progesterone only birth control pill and they'll switch from a combined oral contraceptive pill to a progesterone only method. And you're like, what the heck is that? What, why, what is she talking about? Combined oral contraceptive pills have both estrogen and progesterone and they're actually anti-acne. However, there's another type of, uh, of contraceptive that is progesterone only and it actually will worsen acne. So if you switch to one of those forms, you might expect to get hormonal acne. And maybe in the past you didn't really have hormonal acne, you had just kind of garden variety acne that was well controlled with something like benzoyl peroxide. And now you have this hormonal component going on that honestly topical products are not going to address. There's not a skincare product that is going to help per se the hormonal aspect of hormonal acne. There are acne ingredients that help acne, but they don't, they don't tackle the hormonal signaling part of it. That is going to be medications like spironolactone or switching to a combined oral contraceptive pill. I think people just completely discredit their bodies and their overall health in terms of their skin. I mean, that your skin is an organ and really it's a window to what's going on with the other organs and systems in your body. And the products that you're putting on your skin, they don't really, you, you know, they don't really do that much. They don't sleep for you. They don't eat for you. They don't work out for you. They don't keep you from getting colds and flus. They don't 
uh, you know, reverse side effects of medications that you might be taking at various periods of time in your life. They really just mostly sit on the skin. Some of them percolate down into your skin and, and help control things, but they can only do so much and new things happen in our life and new issues come up and skincare products don't necessarily address those changes. Another thing people will comment about is that they've been using a particular product for a long time and now they find that when they use it, it burns or stings. It may not be the product, it may be that you now have more sensitive skin. And sensitive skin can arise due to medications. Some medications make your skin more sensitive to burning and stinging. They make the little nerves in your skin just a little bit more irritable, hyperactive. So it could be related to a new medication that you're on, or if you're a woman, it could be related to hormonal changes, either related to your cycle or pregnancy, breastfeeding, or being on oral contraceptive pills or a, or a hormonal um, intrauterine device or IUD uh, can also make your skin feel more sensitive. Antibiotics can increase the sensitivity of the skin. If you take antibiotics for being sick, then there is another common skin issue that can come up at any point in your life and it has n nothing, well, I shouldn't say nothing, but generally it has nothing to do with your skincare products and that is urticaria or hives. There are so many different forms of hives that can occur and basically you get redness that comes and goes in different areas of the skin. This can be triggered by having a cold or flu virus. You may not have even had symptoms of being sick, but the cold or flu virus passes through your body and as it's going through your immune system, like, I don't know, rallies against it and then gets a little confused and comes to the skin and makes this, this rash that comes and goes. And you may attribute that to your skincare products no longer working because you now have this redness and itchy sensation in the skin has nothing to do with products. I say in most cases because you can develop an allergy to a product that when applied to the skin causes hives, but that's less common, but it can occur. But more often than not, you know, the the hives issue is is something new and something that skincare products really never would have addressed in the first place it has nothing to do with your products working or not working. You see what I'm saying? Another part of this where people are in the dark is that not everything that happens to you shows up on your skin right away or the next day or even the next week. Sometimes there is quite a bit of lag time, especially if you took a medication. Sometimes you might not have skin issues arise due to that medication for six weeks. Um, so you may forget that you ever took the medication not only medications, but don't forget the booming world of dietary supplements. Some dietary supplements can make your skin more sensitive, can make you more prone to getting a sunburn, to burning and stinging sensations with topical products, and make you more prone to different types of rashes. And there'll be a huge disconnect. Going back to having a cold or flu virus, a lot of those rashes uh, will be more obvious much later on down the road, things like peeling and dryness. And you might be attributing those symptoms to your skincare products and thinking, why are my skincare products suddenly doing this? It's not the products, it's whatever you are exposed to, something going on in your body and it has nothing to do with the products. There are so many different skin diseases, you guys, and skin issues, and a lot of them are super common. So you may go through life using a, a set of skincare products, having a skincare routine that works for you, and you develop a new skin problem that you think was the old skin problem. That is a really common issue. You develop a new, entirely different thing, but in your head you believe it is the old thing that you used to have and that you were thinking that the skincare products were controlling. Um, you know, in the case of, of acne, for example, you had acne in the past, you had a skincare routine that you've been keeping up with all along and things are going well, but now something's changed in your life and you now have hormonal acne, like in the case of taking a progesterone only birth control pill. Um, so you have a new issue going on is what I'm getting at and you may not understand that this new issue is very different than your old issue and so products are really just not gonna address that part of it um, and you may need to see your doctor and maybe need to have a 
oral medication to control that issue. You know, other, you can relate this to having headaches throughout your life. Say you're an adult, you get headaches episodically uh, from time to time and you pop an over-the-counter ibuprofen and it takes a headache away and, and that's it. And then one day you get a headache to the point where you have to go into a, room, a dark room, the lights are bothering you, you kind of see stars, you feel nauseous. I mean, it is a painful, painful headache. You pop an ibuprofen and it doesn't touch it. It's not as though the ibuprofen stopped working. You have a different type of headache. You now have a migraine headache. An ibuprofen really never would have touched a migraine headache in the first place. In the past, you were having maybe tension headaches, which can be helped by ibuprofen, but now you've got a new type of headache. And, and it's, you know, what, what you're used to is just not the right thing anymore. So it's not as though the skincare products change, you change. <laughs> um, either something changes in your health, some exposure changes, or your environment changes. This is also common in, you know, if you go from living in a humid environment, a humid tropical environment to, to a really dry climate, you can expect to see your skin get super dry right away. When I lived in Colorado, just as a personal experience, I, one, one summer I went to Costa Rica for the summer. I was doing a, um, a medical uh, elective there. I was there for the whole summer. It's just a tropical environment. When I came back to Colorado, my skin started peeling right away uh, a few days after getting back because all of a sudden the, there was a huge discrepancy in the ambient humidity in comparison to what my skin was used to in, in, prior and I had all this dryness and peeling. An, another factor that may explain why your products aren't working is maybe you're not sleeping well anymore. Maybe you're under a lot of stress. Stress and sleep do far, far more for the health of your skin than any cream or goo or serum ever will, period. Um, if you start having a lot of restless nights, if you are under a lot of stress, the stress feeds into the poor sleep, the stress levels impact your hormones in your body, and you have you know, a lot of inflammatory mediators cir cir circulating around, that's gonna show up on your skin in the form of flares of acne, in the form of uh, dark under eye circles, drier skin, puffiness, and it's not like your serum can really get in the way of that. Vitamin C serums are not gonna correct a crummy boss who is abusive or a traffic jam that you're stuck in that aggressive driver that keeps cutting you off. Yeah, I mean those things over time, they, that stress builds up, it eats away into, into your health. Um, be aware of that. Skincare products, they're not gonna cultivate a hobby for you um, that's going to help you manage stress. That's something that you have to do. Products aren't gonna do that. I'm telling you, it's the lifestyle factors that matter so much more than anything that you put on your skin. Lifestyle and newsflash, genetics. Uh, some people's genetics make them more predisposed to having certain skin issues, which skincare products, they're not necessarily going to address. People with, you know, some people's genetics make them more likely to have rosacea. And they can have a great skincare routine of products that help reduce flares of rosacea, products that don't burn or sting, products that help calm down redness. But if they go out and have a bunch of alcohol, no amount of niacinamide serum is gonna correct the flushing that they might experience from the alcohol. Um, that is a bad trigger and no, no skincare product is going to put the brakes on that, on that trigger. Yeah, we give, pro we give skincare products way too much credit. It's your lifestyle and that's what's working for you. The skincare products, they help, but they don't stop working. Things change in your life and you have to make adjustments to your lifestyle more so than your skincare products. Uh, it's, it's, it's not like the products stop working. Things in your life changed, most likely. Here's another example. You've all seen on on the Quaker Oats oatmeal container, how it says, I think it says may reduce cholesterol or something like that. Um, so say for example, you go to your primary care doctor, they check your blood work, 
and your doctor's like, hey, you know, your lipid profile came back and I don't know, it's, it's kind of borderline. So maybe you want to think about making some healthy dietary changes. So you're like, okay, I'm going to start eating oatmeal. So you eat oatmeal every day and that's the only change that you make. And a year later, you go back to your doctor and your doctor's like, hey, looks like you made some diet changes. Your dietary lipids came back and they look great, perfect. And you're like, sweet, the oatmeal is working. So what do you do? You're like, whatever, I've got oatmeal on board. So you start smoking, you start eating McDonald's with your oatmeal three times a day. You get in the biggie size with a Coke, fries, you start, <laughs> binge drinking on the weekends uh you're like i don't need to exercise because i've got oatmeal on board and then boom all of a sudden you're having substernal chest pain st st segment elevations on your ekg you show up in the er and they're like hey um looks like you're having a heart attack and you're like what i thought the oatmeal was here the oatmeal stopped working no you put all of these other factors into your life and oatmeal is not going to correct all of that. Um, you know, so it's kind of the same with skincare products. Really, they, they can help support skin health, but it's the lifestyle factors overall that make a huge difference and play way more of a role in, your, in the look of your skin. So lifestyle factors and your genetics. And products also do not correct your genetics or do anything about your genetics. You know, there are people out there who have very healthy skin and their lifestyle habits are not much different than yours, but their genetics are such that their skin ages maybe more slowly. Um, yeah, it sucks, but uh, it is what it is. So products don't correct polymorphisms uh, that you might have. And as you get older, some of those genetic risk factors may start manifesting and products never would have addressed those things. So products don't stop working and I want you guys to really break up with this idea that skincare products do all this stuff for you. This is a myth that the secret to looking good and having uh, skin that doesn't age is all in your skincare routine. That really is like 1% of it and of that 1%, it's mostly your sunscreen. <laughs> uh, the rest is lifestyle and genetics. Uh, that's the key to looking good. Having good genetics and having a healthy lifestyle uh, and being aware of risk factors for skin damage like sunscreen, smoking, alcohol, poor sleep, all of these things, not the, not the serums. I mean, serums, they're fun. Uh, they can improve the look of things, but they're not they're not a cure and they don't, you know, they can only do so much. Skincare products, they, they can only do so much. They can't, they can't change the weather. They can't stop winter from coming. They can't make you sleep eight hours a night. I mean, none of that. They, they really can seal in transepidermal water loss help with skin cell turnover, but your genetics really are the major driving force for changes in skin cell turnover, tendency to have clogging of the pores. And, and so anything that happens in your life that pushes that over the edge can make it seem like your products are not working. They're working, uh, they're just not enough. I hope these tips were helpful to you guys. Uh, and uh, so, it, you know, if you feel like your products are not working, don't chuck them and buy a whole bunch of new junk. <laughs> See your dermatologist or your, your primary care doctor. Hey, you know, maybe it's time for a checkup. Maybe there are some things going on in your life that need attention and they're showing up on your skin in ways that you may not be aware of. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.